So all four cells either met the advertised capacity or slightly exceeded it. Right, so it's time to put those four. We interrupt our regular programming to bring you an update. Well, in actual fact, I noticed something while I was editing this video that I didn't pick up during the build process or even the video itself. So if you spot what the problem is and something didn't quite work out as I was expecting it to, please pop it in the section below and then we'll see and compare notes to see if you've picked it up as well. I will of course do an update video just to show you what I did and what was wrong and how I rectified it after this fact. But please have a look through the video, see what you see and it's not the most obvious thing to do with the build itself. 280 amp hour EVE cells as featured in the previous video to good use. So I thought about building another DIY box, so using wood or whatever I could lay my hands on. I even looked at some of the plastic uh, DIY boxes for 12 volt uh, batteries, but I wasn't that impressed and they weren't that cheap. So I thought to go for another metal one like I did with the Apexium um, battery boxes that I've already built and uh, currently being suggested in the top corner right now. I'm actually up to 30 kilowatt hours, so I've got the two boxes now if you've not seen those videos also put them in the uh, description below. So I wanted to give Eel a try as well as a manufacturer just to see what they're like. And also I like these battery boxes because again you can actually um, service these quite easily. You can just pop the uh, screws out. I know you could do that with a DIY version but this one actually comes with a JK BMS as well. So I think for the overall price which I'll share later on in the video uh, of what it cost me, obviously, including the cells on this to get myself, well, which, which will effectively be a 280 amp hour 12 volt battery. So that would give me around three and a half kilowatt hours of raw storage. Obviously, there's some losses in there and you might not get the whole of that. But um, let's whip this lid off now and see what's inside. Okay, the lid is now off as you can see, so uh, similar crossbar there, which goes above the cells once they're mounted in there, similar to the 48 volt uh, battery boxes that I've built. And I'm assuming these juts out here are specifically for the BMS. So in the box, I'll get all this out actually in a minute, but that looks like the box for the BMS. We've got some terminal covers there. Looks like a box of screws there. And we've got some of these boards here, which I'm assuming will be used around the side, the bottom and between each of the cells. So let's have a look on the front part. So you can see the uh, button there that's to switch the BMS and effectively the battery on and off so that's already mounted in there I haven't got to do anything with that and I think the front part here yes that comes off there are screw holes in the side and the bottom so that bit can come off so I can mount the cells inside so that's how it comes uh, delivered so uh, I'm just going to take all the contents out put them on the table box is empty now as you can see so over here in the lid I've just put the epoxy boards so these will go around the edge of the batteries and between them, including on the bottom of the box itself. Over here is the uh, crossbar as such, which I've now removed the uh, little circuit board that's got the balance leads from. One thing I did notice on this as well is the fact they've actually already put the foam back in on. I don't know if that's visible on camera, but yeah, they've already put the foam back in on, so that saves me a job. Uh, getting the back in off of the other bits and trying to get that lined up, so that's one job saved. So over here we've got the uh, terminals that will fit on the front and obviously the terminal covers. So here there's a nice little uh, bolts box as such with the fuse in there as well because you get a fuse with this which is really handy. So uh, that's uh, nice and neat and uh, just ready to use uh, as part of the assembly process. So here's the BMS, so this is a JK BMS uh, which obviously you need to make sure the battery is monitored and protected as such. And here's a little bit of a close-up of the uh, circuit board itself. And one thing I wasn't entirely sure of was which way round to get the cells, but if you can look at the top one there, it actually gives it marked up as um, cell positive for cell one is on the left-hand side and the negative is on the right-hand side. And obviously that uh, flip round uh, to get them in series, so you have to flip the batteries round so that the positive moves, as you can see. So the positive of the battery for cell four is where the uh, lead's coming out there. So that's handy, so I don't need to refer to any diagrams because it's just four cells, quite easily done and easily constructed. So let's get on with uh, building this battery. Almost forgot to open the BMS box because I was missing a few bits that I should have had. So as you can see, the BMS is in there. We've got the uh, leads to connect up to the BMS as well. We've got the uh, bus bars there and we've got covers as well that I'm assuming will cover over each of the bus bars for extra protection. 
So that's what's in the BMS box. Time to get the protection boards in now, these epoxy boards. So they come in different sizes, as you can imagine. So we've got one that's slightly thinner, so I'd imagine that one would be for the bottom. And then we've got two for the side here. So um, they'll go in on the side. We've got, and um, we've got four, how many have we got? Four, yep. Four for the individual cells to go in between each cell. And then I'd imagine the last one will be going on the front right there. So uh, from memory or what I've done before, it's usually better if you put the side and the back ones in first and then put the bottom one in to finish. So let's move that out of the way. So let's get, these, aren't, these aren't stuck ones like the 48 volt uh, battery boxes that I've worked on. So let's get those in there and do a bit of a hand holding exercise. So let's get one on the back plate there as well. Let's make sure that they're all in and then get the bottom one in last of all. So hopefully that will keep everything in place and it all fit perfectly. So there we have it. So uh, they're in now, so I just need to get the cells in place and then obviously put one of these between each cells and then finish off at the front. So uh, let's get some cells in here. So here we have the four 280 amp hour EVE cells ready to go. They're fully charged and fully top balanced. So uh, just reminding myself to get the configuration correctly. Again, I'm just using the uh, sort of balance lead board here. So cell one is marked up on here on the circuit board, positive this side, negative this side. And then obviously I have to connect the cells in series. So the positive then goes over to cell two on this side. And then cell three is uh, positive this side and then finishing off with cell four on positive, which will go directly to the terminal via the fuse. So uh, let's get these loaded in now. So let's start off with cell number one. I hope I can keep these boards in here. I tried to fall out, there we go. So always double check this part to make sure you've got it connected in the correct manner. So I've got positive on cell one this side and negative this side. So that matches up the board down to my right and your left. So now it's time to uh, connect in series. So the next one is I need to put cell two, the positive this side. So the positive is marked up as the black terminal here. So let's get that put in there without forgetting to put in one of the epoxy boards between uh, the cells. So let's put that in there like so, and then move that in there. And there we have it. So all the cells are now in as I would expect them to be. But what I'm missing is an epoxy board for the front. Okay, I'm gonna to need to figure out uh, if I've got a spare one and let the manufacturer know. So I'm gonna go and find one of those now and then um, get that in and uh, get the faceplate uh, set in. So luckily I've managed to find one that I had with uh, some of the other builds that I've been doing. Um, it's about the same width which you'd expect, but slightly taller, so I'm not too worried about that. But that should enable me now just to finish off this build. So what I'm gonna do now is just put the faceplate on. I've got uh, six screws to put in there and obviously to, to compress the cells down within the box because uh, they're fully charged and they've expanded a little bit as you would expect. But then if I get these all in here and then get that down there, that should be good and they should be compressed. And then uh, the cells part is actually done. Okay, let's get this face plate in now. And the other thing that I've just checked on here as well is just to make sure that I've got the two uh, screw holes at the top because if you get this in the wrong way round, it means that you can't put the crossbar on. So uh, let's try and get this in here now. Time to connect the cells up now to make the 12 volt battery, so we need to connect them in series. So to do that, we've got to connect bus bars between the positive and negatives on the cells, and then this will be the main negative of the battery, and this will be the main positive. 
So the main positive will go directly via a fuse to the main positive terminal of the battery and the negative will get fed through the BMS which will sit on top and then the wires will come to the negative terminal so that's how that battery will be presented with the terminals right at the front. So first off then I'm going to have to put in these uh, bus bars here to connect these cells up. So I would need to connect each of those up but these also come with protection so effectively what I need to do is make sure that each of the positive cells has this little sort of hole here which is a little uh, screw hole which you could connect up these leads on here to. So I'll show you these little leads here will then connect onto those but they also have these protection pieces here which you need to put in um, on each end of these and then obviously make sure their uh, colour corresponds to the cell, uh, the cell terminal which is underneath. So what I'm going to do first of all then is just get a couple of these made up and I think I've seen a problem as well because I think the positive ones are supposed to have a little cutout so you can actually get to the, um, the hole for attaching the uh, balance and voltage lead. So what I need to do is probably, because they both fit obviously perfectly like that and that's how they would sit on. So obviously red is positive and um, this lighter beige colour is actually negative. So they would sit on like there like so. And these are flexible bus bars as well, which mean they move as the batteries sort of can sort of uh, expand and contract as part of charging process. So that's effectively how one would look. So what I need to do is I need to figure out a way and maybe go and cut a little notch out of there so that I can actually get and reach it without because I'm not sure those will go underneath. OK, another little thing just to have a quick look at. So uh, give me a few minutes and I'll have a look. So I've just had a quick play around with these and I think I'm actually going to try and do it without cutting it initially and you won't need to see uh, the retake on that because I can do it if I do need to cut them when it comes to actually attaching these leads onto here. So I'm going to see if I can get them underneath this um, on the uh, positive terminals obviously where the tapping is done on the um, bus bars. So I'm going to try it without that first and see if I can do it but if not there's nothing ventured, nothing gained. I can just um, rewind, rewind and do it again um, obviously you won't have to see that but um, I'll try it as it is at the moment and obviously because the cells didn't come as part of this package these cells were bought separately I've already got the nuts that came with them anyway to uh, attach the bus bars and actually connect the uh, cell terminals up so obviously they wouldn't come with this particular kit I just thought I'd mention that so these are just standard nuts that would come with these and work directly on these so um, that's what I'm going to be using to connect the bus bars and obviously make the final connections on the positive and negative. So uh, I'm going to get these uh, connected up now and, and to do that with these you need to move them if you like forward so you can keep them on there and then once, once they're moved forward you can then obviously access the terminals and actually get them put in. So that's, this, this is the, probably the trickiest bit other than obviously connecting up the uh, leads in the end. So again just making sure the uh, colours and the little um, attachment point are actually where they should be. So the positive in this case is there. So they would go in there like so. And then I'll put a couple of uh, bolts down. Obviously I'm not going to torque them down just yet. I'm just getting them in place ready to go. So uh, you just put those up like that. Okay, so that's the first one done. So uh, I'm going to sort of whip through these now. Right, time to add the crossbar in now and obviously the foam padding is already on there so that makes life a little bit easier. So I'm just going to line them up on the holes, as in the screw holes on the top and the front. There where it's compressed it a little bit because this is too big but I'm not taking that off now because that's now uh, sealed in there so I'm not really going to remove that because it's just cut the edge over a little bit on that but again um, if I'd had five of these uh, little epoxy balls here 
that wouldn't have been an issue but again it's not damaged the cell in any way so I'll take that crossbar as fitted so I'm just going to get the uh, appropriate screws out and get this uh, assembled now. So the board's attached now and they've got these little cutouts here which the uh, leads can go through which is uh, quite useful. I just need to make sure I get those through and then obviously figure out how I'm going to get them on there as well. But crossbar and board attached. So next up I need to attach the BMS and I need to attach it this way round so that these battery uh, connections here can then flow like that and then the connection for the uh, balance leads and voltage leads go straight into there. But one thing I've already seen is the fact that this little challenge I've got to try and get these uh, connections straight onto the bus bar is going to be an issue. So, because um, I've got to try and do it before I've put the BMS on because otherwise I'm not going to have any room to move because it will be in the way. So I think I will have to cut, um, probably will have to cut things in there because I don't know whether I'm going to be able to get enough out of the way if I can bend this back, maybe I could do it um, and get these screwed in without dropping these screws as well because I'm keen not to drop because they're tiny screws to attach these as well. So I'm thinking, because I can't, I can't bend them, obviously I might be able to find something that's plastic to bend it out of the way, but it's going to be really tough to try and get those underneath. So I'm going to try and slot that one under there now actually and just see if it will even fit without pulling, because obviously I don't want to pull anything off of the circuit board. No, I'm going to make a slight cut in there just to see that if, if that makes any difference. Okay, so I've made some cuts or little slit cuts in here. So uh, it just makes life a bit easier just moving the top piece out of the way. So in theory now I should be able to get these in and because um, they're more exposed, which is, is good without having to cut big slots out of them. So, and again, before I put the BMS in, if I can get those done now, I think that would be better. So uh, let's get on with it. Well, there we have it. Uh, not the easiest process in the world. Very, very fiddly. I'm going to feed back to the manufacturer on that one. Uh, that could definitely be improved. Time to get the BMS on now. We've got all that uh, messing about sorted. So there we go, the BMS has been mounted. I might just move this uh, balance lead a little bit over to one side so that it doesn't rub on the uh, screw bit that's come through the bottom on there. So uh, I'm just going to adjust that now, but we can get the rest of this connected up. Time to connect the B minus, which stands for battery minus. So connecting the BMS to the minus of the whole battery itself. So that's that this one here. And then the other cable that I'm going to be connecting up at, well, towards the end of the build is to go to the uh, terminal. So that's marked up as P minus, so power minus if you like. So that's for that terminal. So uh, let's get this uh, connected up. So I'm going to release it a little bit, but I won't bore you with those details and get it a little bit straighter because I don't like the way this is bent. 
So I'm much happier with the way that's set up now and I've talked this down to the right uh, setting as I have done for the other cells. So next thing I'm gonna do is just plug in these. These are actually temperature sensors. Uh, there's no real indication where these actually are supposed to go. So I'm just gonna plug them in here on the end of the BMS. That's clicked in nicely. And I'm just gonna run them down the side of the cells so that I've got a good idea um, in terms of that. So I might put some um, use in Kapton tape on there as well just to hold them in place. But uh, I think they just go down the side of the cells uh, to give an idea. So uh, I'll just run them actually underneath one of the cell terminals because again this is just to sense uh, any kind of sort of temperature that would trigger off the BMS to say hold on a minute you need to stop what you're doing. So uh, not very elegant but um, I'll figure out whether I need to put some Kapton tape on there so that it's actually directly attached to the cells. I mean, ideally it should either be down the side, but there's not any room to put that in there now. And there's no gaps really to put anything down there at the moment. But um, ideally that should have probably been done earlier on, but um, not in the instructions that I got. So that's that bit done now. So I'm going to uh, attach the uh, front plate now. Okay, so that's the front panel attached. Now it's time to get the terminals on. So before I put the terminals in, I'll just show you they have to go in like that so that they're flat. Right, time to connect up the positive of the battery to the positive terminal. So I'm going to be using this 250 amp fuse. So I've cut this board here as well again because this is another problem with it slightly sticking. So I've got that in nicely in the middle. But before I do that, I've just realised I need to put this on here as well. Uh, let's get that on there as well because that's obviously the detection for the uh, cell. And there we have it, so it's gone through the little uh, cutout there as well. Uh, nice bend on there, so that's now the positive connected up. Right, final piece now, so I just need to connect the P- minus on the BMS, so that's uh, power minus, to the uh, negative terminal now. So uh, I'm going to wrestle these little cables in now, so hopefully I can get a nice sort of bend on it again, but uh, we'll see how it goes, because obviously I want to make sure it's got a clear line and it reaches and it's completely flat and uh, attached correctly. Okay, I'll come back in a minute. I'm just going to see if I can get those uh, tidied up. Right, so I've finished up on that. Everything's tightened down and it's nice and solid now. So I'm happy with that. That's about the best I can get with this dual cable into one terminal approach. So I'm, I'm happy with the way that's laid out now. Time to plug in the uh, switch now. So that goes into this port right here. So let's plug that in there like so. Made a little click as well. So now it's connecting up what would normally be the uh, balance lead uh, connection directly, but because it's going through the circuit board, I just need to plug that in now. And obviously you can't, can't get this wrong. It's uh, obviously the larger connector there and the smaller connector there. So uh, let's just make sure I've got them round the right way. Otherwise that is the bit that I could get wrong. So you've got the little teeth on the, each of these connectors. So you've got one there and there's also some teeth. I don't know if you can see that, some teeth on there as well. So uh, let's get that one plugged in first. And you can actually see the teeth have bitten nicely into there. And then we'll just spin that round a little bit because I need to make sure that's in properly as well. And then connect that like so. Just move those down like that. So that is all now connected up. And again, just for a bit of Kapton tape, which I'll sort out after the fact before I put the lid on. 
Um, I think it's time to test the battery. Right, moment of truth now. I've just put the lid on like I do on most of these, so just in case anything pops when I push it. So let's push the button. Okay, we've got some beeps coming out. I'm just looking on my phone now. Let's scan. And there we have it. So it's found uh, the JK BMS. So let's click on it now just to see whether that works. It's bleeped away. And there we have it. So it looks like it's there. Obviously it's fully charged, so it's showing 14.48 volts because uh, I top balanced it and fully charged all the cells just before. And it looks like it's in good shape. So let's just check the settings out. So I need to change the cell count. Let's put the password in, which I think if my memory serves me correctly, it's one, two, three, four, five. And obviously I need to change the cell count to four because we only have four and the battery capacity, which we know to 280 amp hours. And I'm also gonna do the trigger to zero five. Let's select okay on all of that. And then go back to status. And it looks like it's in, it's not changed it. So I'm going to modify it again. Let's try again. Oh, it's asking me for a new password. I just want to put in the cell count. So let's do that. Okay, that. And let's change that to 280 again. And that's right, because I was supposed to click okay on all of them. So I've just remembered that one now. And now if we go back to status, Okay, so it's looking in better shape now. And as you can see, balance currents already started to move uh, current around to balance the cells, even though they're pretty well balanced. So I would say we have a working battery. So in terms of control, obviously it's got balance charge and discharge. I'm gonna switch on. So that's now a working battery. So what I'm gonna quickly do is just see if we've got the same voltage at the terminals. And we've got 14.53 at the terminals. So we have a working battery. So next up, let's do some tests. Just remembered one other thing I should have just covered off quickly is the fact that the bolts obviously come with the kit as well. So you've got the bolts for the terminals and obviously I've got the terminal covers, which I showed you earlier. You literally just clip those on the front like so. And then to switch the battery off for now, before I go through the testing, just hold it down for five seconds. And now the battery at the terminal is off. So this testing setup might take a little bit of an explanation. So here goes. So this uh, battery has got 280 amp hour EVE cells in it, which are good for 1C, which is effectively 280 amps that they can, or uh, well, you can draw from them. And uh, internally, this has obviously got the JK BMS as I've already shown you, and that's good for up to 200 amps continuous. So this battery overall really running at about 200 amps is probably in the realms of what I'm gonna try and do today. So I was gonna use one of my old favorites here, which is my MPP 12 volt uh, hybrid or solar inverter, which is good, up, well, good to up to a thousand watts. So uh, it can drain up to about 100 amps before it starts to get uh, stressed or starts to error out. And um, what I've got here as well is my uh, Beztec, my sort of handheld version of the uh, 12 volt uh, inverter as well. And this is also a, a, a one kilowatt or 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter as well. So what I've done is I've connected them both up at the same time. So in terms of protection for running this test, obviously I've got the uh, circuit break here, which is good for up to 125 amps. And the Beztec as well has got some um, fuses around the back as well so they've both got um, internal circuit protection or overload protection 
and also in here on the positive terminal we've got a, a 250 amp fuse so it's all fused up correctly so I'm quite happy with that so what I've done or what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you what I've set up to try and get this test working so for those viewers that are getting deja vu at the moment these are actually the cells that featured in the scan video that I did so that's currently being suggested in the top corner right now if you want to go and have another look at that or if you've not seen it it might be worth having a look at so these cells were pretty poor quality um, I was scanned uh, I'll give an update video shortly about how this all turned out but as you can see I've still got them but I wanted to find another use for them so what I've actually done is I've actually set up a couple of batteries, a couple of 24 volt batteries because I had 16 cells. And what I do is I use these cells now when I get free or actually being paid to use energy on my Octopus Agile tariff. So uh, when it's stormy conditions or whatever and there's a lot of wind on the uh, network as such, um, I can actually charge these up as a dumping battery and then use the energy that's stored there when it's exceptionally cheap or I'm being paid to do so to charge other batteries up that I'm using or just to run things in the house. So again, they're very poor quality, but um, they do have some kind of use. And again, I'll do a follow up video to show how that all turned out in the end. So I've got two of these in the house that I'm going to be using for this test of this um, battery. And um, I'm going to be effectively filling these up temporarily while I test the capacity or test the amount of amps I can put through this new battery. And this is connected up to my EA Sun 24 volt inverter, as you can see here, which is in turn connected up to the Beztec. And the MPP, this lead here, goes all the way off to the other side of the house where it's actually charging up using my MPP 24 volt uh, solar inverter, almost identical setup to what I've got here. So it seems rather convoluted, but in theory, both of these inverters here should pull about 100 amps to actually properly test this uh, battery out just to see whether the JK BMS does what it says it's going to do. So runs up to about 200 amps. So both of these are set up to effectively run at uh, 30 amps. So it's going to expect 30 amps from the utility. So that's obviously using, the, uh, using this as the grid. So uh, I'm just going to get all this switched on now and we'll get the test underway. Right, the battery is now on as you can see, meaning the Beztec and the MPP just out of shot are both ready to be switched on. Once they're switched on, they'll start charging as if they're connected to grid the two 24 volt inverters with the two dump batteries uh, around the house at the moment. So I'm hoping this all works out, but what I'm going to do is just open up the uh, app the uh, BMS app on my phone just to show you what we're drawing from here and you'll also see the other JK BMS which is uh, running the uh, battery I've already showed you actually so it will also show and I'll see whether we can see that charging as well and how much that's drawing through the EA Sun 24 volt inverter. Right so it's found both of the uh, JK BMS's on my phone as you can see so let's switch on the uh, Beztec first so that's switched on and then I'm going to go into the first uh, BMS which is 10p which is actually this one here and the one that ends in 20p is the one for the 24 volt battery over there. So that's now come in and you can hear some clicks going on. So let's see what that ramps up to. Remember this is trying to charge the 24 volt battery at 30 amps. So that's ramping up now. And what are we getting? We're getting just over 900 odd watts on that. So I'll see if I can quickly change over to the 20p. Let's see whether that comes into life because that should be close enough. And interesting to see the amount of power that it's saying that's going in. So it's only showing 650 versus the 900 which is coming out of here. So that's working uh, as it should be and you've got all of the voltages there. So let's just flip back over to the 10p. And now the Beztec uh, fan has kicked in so that's about 900 watts now. Drawing about 70 amps as you can see on screen. So what I'm going to do now is just, just going to switch on the MPP uh, solar inverter and see what we can get this up to. 
So you might hear a beep when that kicks in. And there we have it. So that should hopefully start ramping up now and we'll see that the uh, amps start to increase. So that's going. I'm just going to see if I can actually see the uh, BMS on the other 24 volt dump battery. So let's flip over to that. And that's actually working as well. So I'm obviously close enough for a signal to work on that. So that's now ramping up. As you can see, the power coming in is increasing. So it's going to get a bit noisy here in a minute. So let's switch back to see what the um, battery, the 12 volt battery is getting up to. So power wise now it's obviously ramping up. The overall power there as you can see is getting to the 1700 mark, up to 140 amps. Over 150 mark now, so it's still ramping up nicely. And obviously the voltage will drop at that point. So we're up to 2000 watts now. It's still at, sitting around 160 amps. So we've still got some to play with on that. Let's flip back over and see what the other one's doing. So that one's charging at 30 amps as uh, I've set it for. Let's look at the other BMS. So let's go back to the 20p, see what we're getting on that. And that's charging at 24.9 amps. So that's dropped down a little bit. So I can't remember whether, no, it's not full up. So uh, that should be charging faster than that. So that's relative power getting into the batteries though. So it's uh, recording it slightly differently. So I'm just going to see if I can ramp up the uh, inverter that's just down there to see if we can get it running a little hot, hotter. So the conclusion is on that. I think putting up the uh, inverter or the EA Sun inverter to use 40 amps was too much for it so that spiked the inverter too high so uh, that didn't work but it ran okay with uh, effectively just over 2000 watts which I think was really good so that's going to try and jump back in now so I'm not entirely sure if that's going to work or not now and whether it will try to trip it out again but um, the MPP's kicked in now so if I did try and push this one on here this probably won't work because I've reached the limit on the inverters so uh, that's probably what the limiting factor is for me now. So I think the battery itself, I think that might trip again. Let's see if it does when it ramps up. Yeah, so the best tech is now tripped out. So yes, as uh, you can see, the MPP is still running at just over 1000 uh, watts, running at about 80 amps. So I think it's more my capability to be able to get a load that's going to actually push this battery uh, in a controlled fashion. But I think in the overall scheme of things, this has been a successful test because everything is working as it should be. Right, a couple of loose ends literally to tie up before uh, completing the battery. So I'm just going to cut myself some um, capped on tape with these nail scissors because they've got a nice sharp edge. So I'm going to cut a few of those off now and then get them stuck down because this stuff's not very sticky but uh, I find cutting it with these sharp scissors works quite well obviously you need to be careful about using scissors like this anywhere near the battery which is I'm just showing and I'm keeping them out of reach of any terminals or short circuit ability as such so I'm going to cut some of these off now I think I'm going to stick one on the end cell here and the other one in fact that one sat nicely there already so that one, one is going to go and sit on cell, whatever that is, cell one, isn't it? And then I'll probably move this one back down here to sit on cell four. So I've got a fairly good spread between each of the temperature sensors. Done and dusted now. So I have uh, stuck down uh, one of the temperature sensors there, put a bit more capped on tape around the side to stop the 
lead flailing around. And the other one I've stuck down, you might not be able to see it under there, but um, I stuck down right on the top of this cell here. And again, capped on tape there and put some there so that this uh, lead falls into one of these natural little uh, parts there which uh, the leads can go through. What am I looking for? Nooks, that's it, the nook there. So, um, and that lead's not really touching anything else other than a bit of rubber on top of there. So uh, that's the temperature sensors taken care of. So the last thing I wanted to cover off was cutting the little um, slits in the uh, positive sort of cap covers here and um, how I did that because I didn't actually film that but just using a pair of these insulated uh, snips here, uh, cable snips. So I have one of these spare ones here so effectively you get it near where you need it uh, so it's right along the edge there because obviously that's where it uh, attaches on these particular bus bars so literally all you've got to do is get one of these and then get the snips along the end like that go back as far as you uh, want to and then just click like that and then you've got a nice uh, little slit so I forgot to show that earlier in this video but again these are insulated so I did that while these were on but ideally you do that before you put these on because it makes it as you saw earlier makes it significantly easier so that I'm going to put the lid back on now and put all the screws in I won't bore you with that bit but um, that is it for the uh, this battery uh, box assembly of these uh, cells so if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, just pop them in the section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks again for watching and stay tuned to DadVinci.